Today we're in Lviv and we're joined by the Minister of Economy of Ukraine, Mr. Ivaros Abramovichus. Mr. Abramovichus, many thanks for joining us. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Minister, can we start with uh, the reforms in the regulatory area? I understand that the Ministry is preparing some drastic reforms and some even call them the regulatory heliotine. So can you tell us what it is and most importantly, when it will take place? Well, uh, we split uh, regulatory uh, deregulation reform into three parts. One was uh, removing access uh, barriers to do business, which we identified over 200 uh, pain points uh, together with business associations and removed 30% of them, like quarantine certificates, expedited uh, issuance of phytosanitarian certificates, uh, removed the corrupt uh, state agency, state monopoly on utilization of packaging called Ukraeko Resursi. But all of these initiatives are going way too slow. Business wants to see changes in deregulatory environment uh, ASAP. Last year, according to the survey, we were last in Europe when it comes to regulatory environment and our regulatory environment was illustrated as repressive. So therefore we uh, hired a worldwide leader in uh, regulatory guillotine they have a trademark uh, on this term, Jacobs, Cardova & Associates, which is an American uh, firm that have done regulatory guillotine in 15 countries. They have done deregulation in over 100 countries worldwide. So they did operational plan during the month of May, uh, which foresees uh, uh, a complete uh, review of our regulatory uh, environment uh, over the course of three years, where the burden of proof would fall on regulatory agencies. They would have to prove that they are operating uh, in line with uh, legal norms, that all of their 14,000 regulatory acts are business friendly, there's no corruption element in them, and those are in line with our international obligations, particularly when it comes to our association agreement uh, with the European Union. Uh, if they fail to prove over the course of, let's say, one year, uh, regulatory acts need to be amended, completely removed um, and therefore we will clean up the system in a relatively aggressive and brutal way. But we need to get support from the Cabinet of Ministers on this initiative. We already received support of National Reform Council and obviously Parliament has to support that as well. Well, I think that's the main question. Do you expect to receive the support from the Cabinet of Ministers and when this support will come? Uh, I think, uh, you know, we're mainly talking about the, the, the techniques. I think the approach to have a massive review of the regulatory framework is, is there. I think the devil is in the detail. How painful this will be for small and medium, ent medium enterprises? Because definitely every reform is, is, is in the beginning. It's, it's a painful process. And the Ukrainian businesses, they have come already through a, a, a big period of um, economic stagnation, uh, currency devaluation. Will the bus Ukrainian businesses survive through this reform? Uh, no, not all reforms need to be painful. And uh, deregulation reform is not painful for business at all. It is vice versa. It is very beneficial for the business. It is painful for those that have been involved in issuance of certificates, permits, licenses and so on. These are all uh, government agencies. Uh, most of them uh, have been over years created with only one goal to extort money uh, from the business, delay uh, business activities and uh, so on. So I think business will only welcome uh, this initiative and we know that for a fact. Uh, so uh, as a result, uh, we expect uh, cost of doing business to decrease by 50%. Uh, and that means uh, less money spent on necessary licenses, less money obviously on bribes, less time spent, uh, you know, waiting in queues uh, to get licenses and, you know, driving to the regulatory bodies to get uh, permits and uh, so on. Well, there are some people which say that the Ministry of Economy um, is uh, one of the government agencies where, a lot of, where there's a lot of potential for corruption. Um, obviously, uh, the new government has pledged to eradicate corruption. And uh, what we're hearing now that a lot of people are expecting, they, they do see the changes, but they are expecting these changes to happen faster. You yourself said that you would like to see them happening faster. Um, how soon do you think the Ukrainian government will be able to say that we have managed to fight corruption, period. Uh, we fight corruption 
in business through deregulation, the less interaction between business and government bodies, the less corruption there is. Country in transition with weak institutions is a poor regulator. Uh, and when we pay $200 of salaries to public servants, they also are certainly tempted to get involved in the corrupt schemes. With this aim, we have fired a lot of people in the ministry. We want to renew our staff. We fired almost 400 people out of 1,200, and we hired 85 new, fresh, unspoiled people with uh, Western education, with experience from uh, working in Western companies, and so on. Unfortunately, we are not uh, SBU or Prosecutor's Office or uh, Ministry of Internal Affairs, so we cannot uh, influence, you know, fighting corruption on a national level. But where we could, we did fight when it comes to Kudasurs, I mentioned to you. I uh, became chairman of uh, uh, oil auctions of Ukrnafta and immediately removed 15% discount, which is, you know, up to $200 million in benefits from, for the buyers over the years uh, on an annual basis. So we removed that and saved for the state-owned enterprises. So the fight goes on, but people want the bad guys to sit in jail. So here we have instruments like Anti-Corruption Bureau, Business Ombudsman Office, recently created ones. But I think uh, patience uh, for society is running out and both our international partners and people in the country, they want uh, basically dozens of people to end up behind the bars and I totally support that. Obviously, uh, with your fight with corruption, there are a lot of people in the government, including senior government officials, who would like things to remain as they are, as they were. Uh, so how much of resistance do you face in, on your path of fighting corruption? Well, we have uh, quite a new, few new ministers in the, in the government, uh, many from the private sector. I certainly believe that uh, none of them you know, are involved in any uh, corrupt uh, schemes. Uh, so I think uh, that we have moved one step in the right direction by at least choosing ministers uh, that have no intention uh, to, to go uh, you know, the old uh, way. But as I said, uh, you know, uh, first step in fighting corruption in government offices would be to raise salaries for public servants. Let's drastically cut numbers of public servants, but let's increase salaries for those uh, that remain in the public uh, administration. And Mr. Abramovich, is my final question. Apart from the regulatory reform, uh, which hopefully will take place sometime soon, are there any other significant changes which Ukrainians or the country can expect from your ministry in the nearest future? Well, there is a number of reforms that we are undertaking. This is state-owned enterprise reform, where we are restructuring the way state-owned enterprises are managed. Top management is appointed, uh, you know, how they are audited and how they report financial statements. Public procurement reform just passed uh, the Cabinet of Ministers. First electronic, you know, public procurement transaction took place in our country only in February. By the end of next year, all transactions when it comes to public procurement will have to be in an electronic form. We're also you know, working very much on export uh, promotion. We also uh, work on uh, things like intellectual uh, property rights uh, reform, uh, state reserve uh, reform, tourism sector reform and a number of others. For quick wins, what we discussed with uh, Lviv businessmen, you know, we as a country finally launched 3G uh, license uh, 3G uh, service uh, last week and people want uh, some visible uh, other technological and, 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 and uh, other uh, sort of novelties in the country. So I believe that uh, PayPal, uh, you know, availability of PayPal in our country uh, would be a very welcome thing and people also say why don't you try to bring IKEA to the country. So we are actually in talks with the Swedish Embassy about the arrival of IKEA, so uh, negotiations are ongoing. Well, let's hope that these changes will indeed come to Ukraine very soon. Mr. Romavich, many thanks for joining Thank us you. and talking to us. This was Volodymyr Suluhu for Ukraine Today, together with the Minister of Economy of Ukraine, Mr. Ivaris Abramovich. Thank you for watching us.